Hi, this is Dave Dunbar at General Pipe Cleaners. And today we wanted to talk about the power feed, the cable power feed for our machines and how to troubleshoot it, and how to do some routine maintenance. Now before you actually do routine maintenance on the power feed, there's a couple things you should do first. A lot of times when people are having a problem getting the cable in or out of the machine, they assume it's a power feed when it's really not. So what we recommend is take the power feed off the machine and see if you can push the cable in and out by hand. If you can't, well, maybe the problem is not the power feed, it might be the cable itself, maybe it's rusty or kinked or it has a, thrown a loop inside the drum, or there might be a problem mechanically with the drum. So look at those things first. But after doing that, after isolating the problem to the power feed, then there's a really simple thing you can do. Take the power feed off, put your finger in the back end of it, like this, and see if the rollers roll, see if they move. 90% of the time what happens is dirt and other impurities get into the sealed bearing and it stops moving. At that point it's not a power feed, it becomes a brake and it's not going to help you. So what to do in that situation? Well, we're going to go over today on how to change the roller bearings on the power cable feed. Now what you're going to need for this is this very simple flathead screwdriver and a 3 16 Allen wrench. That's all you're going to need. Now right here I have a power cable feed from our Speeder 92. It's a larger machine, but you'll find as we go through it that the logic holds for all the power feeds that we have. And also keep in mind that before we start taking apart the power feed and changing rollers, things like that, you want to do other things to make sure that you've isolated the problem to this piece. The first thing to do, of course, is to take the power feed off the machine so you can play with it like, like it is right now. Now the power feed has three roller bearings, okay. 12 o'clock clock position, 4 o'clock clock position, and 8 o'clock clock position. Now the easiest way to get out the rollers is through these discs that are on those positions. You just unscrew these and then unscrew the swing pins. The swing pins are the piece that actually allows the power feed roller to, uh, to pivot and feed the cable in and out and then you'll find that the whole carrier will come out in your hand. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew these screws, take out the swing pin, and we're going to get out the carrier, the piston if you will, that holds the feed roller bearing. And we're going to change those. So, the first thing to do is to unscrew these three screws that hold the disc on to the power cable feed body. Now, notice that this disc is dimpled. One side is concave and the other one is convexed. You want to put it on the same way that you found it when you reassemble the power cable feed at the end. Next, let's loosen the swing pin. They unscrew the same way. Once you've taken off the disc and removed the swing pin, the whole carrier will come out in your hand. Notice that you have a roller bearing on one side, thrust bearing on the other to help it rotate. Right there is the screw where the uh, swing pin is inserted. So we're going to put our attention on the feed roller bearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off this roller bearing. To do that you need a 3 16 Allen wrench. We call this a shaft. Once you take the shaft out, the roller bearing assembly will come out. Now you'll probably notice that this will be worn, or perhaps it won't be rolling. That's one of the dead giveaways on these. If they're not working, they often freeze up. The steel we use on the jackets for these is actually harder than the steel that we use for the cables. So they very seldom wear out. Usually you'll find them frozen. So what usually happens is dirt and debris will corrode the inside of the sealed bearings and the thing will freeze up. And that's why you have to, have to change them. So you take your replacement feed roller bearing and you line it up the same way. There are fiber washers on either side and there are pieces inside. Get them all lined up, carefully put them inside the carrier. What I like to do 
is take your Allen wrench and put it down here because sometimes, as it has this time, the fiber washers have a tendency to want to go off of the reservation. Once you have everything lined up, put the shaft back in, hand tighten, and screw it down with your Allen wrench. Once you've tightened, once it's back together, make sure it's rolling properly. Make sure everything is in there the way you want it. Put the thrust bearing back on. And you can reinsert. Now, this hole right here where the swing pin was attached has to be facing up towards the front of the power feed. So when you place it back in, you can put your finger in in order to place this. Make sure that you can see the hole where the swing pin is going to go and then insert the swing pin. Again, hand tighten and finish it off. Once that's back in, again taking the disc and the same way that you took it off, make sure the dimples are out if they were out or if they were in, put it on the same way, line it back up with the holes and put it back on. Now the two bottom rollers go exactly that way. 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock clock positions. The one at the top is slightly different. It starts the same way though. First thing, you just take out the feed control knob. Just unscrew it completely. Now you have three screws holding a disc down. It's a different kind of disc. It looks a little different, but other than that, it's the same. Again, three screws. and the disc. Underneath the disc you have some things that look a little different. You have a spring, you have a holder, and you have a ball bearing. You can just put all this together and save it for the back end. Then you'll notice that this swing pin is a little bit different also. It has something underneath it. It has a lifting spring. That's designed to keep the whole assembly from falling down onto the cable when there's no pressure on it. You know, note that position because when you put it back together again, it has to be exactly the same way. That spring can't be on top of the swing pin or else the device won't work right. So just as in the bottom rollers, we unscrew the swing pin. and the carrier comes right out. The carrier looks the same. From this point, everything is the same as the one we looked at before. Unscrew it with a 3 16 Allen screw. Replace the roller. We recommend actually replacing all three rollers at the same time because they have almost equal wear and are subject to equal forces. They have the same amount of dirt and grime that is, is threatening to get inside the bearings, the sealed bearings. It's good to replace them all at the same time. It solves problems in the future. So do the same thing on this as we did on the one before. Replace the roller and then we can reinsert. Again, the hole for the swing pin has to be forward. You push it in and make sure that where you're going to put the swing pin is above that lifting spring. And tighten, put the spring, the holder, and the ball bearing back in in exactly the same way. Put the disc back on. And put the feed control knob in last. Now notice that there's a limit nut on here. If you need to, you can adjust this to keep your employees from actually screwing it down all the way. And that's for you. Now after you assemble it back the way it was, you can test it. You can actually look it's through the back. You can put your finger in here and make sure all the rollers are rolling. When you screw down on the feed control knob, you should notice the top roller moving, going up and down so it makes contact with the cable. 
All three rollers have to make contact with the cable for this to work effectively. And it has to pivot. All the swing pins have to be engaged so they can move, pivot the feed control bearings so that they can screw the cable in and out. Okay. So, when you're done with that, put it back on the machine and test it. Make sure everything is working properly. Now again, this is a, a power feed that we use for some of the larger devices like the Speed Router 92, XL, Maxi Router, Metro. We also have other power feeds. For example, this is one for a mini router. Now the logic is the same on all these. The swing pins, top feed control knob. There are rollers in there that are smaller, but in function identical to the ones in the larger one, the larger power feed. The only difference really is instead of actually unscrewing three screws to get to replace a disc and get at the carrier, it's good to have some snap rings because it's held in by a snap ring. Okay? That's the only difference. Again, once you have these put back together again and we replace the rollers, test it, put it back on the machine, test it on the machine, make sure everything is working properly. If you have any further questions, feel free to call the Drain Brains at 800-245-6200. They are very used to dealing with issues having to do with power feed and feeding out and feeding in, so they should be able to help you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for using General. Have a great day. General Pipe Cleaners, the toughest tools down the line.